And welcome back to the show. Well, traditionally, America has viewed higher education as a means to achieve upward mobility and add value to the community. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, this avenue for prosperity was foundationally shaken, and many of the pervasive equity issues present in American higher education have become even more prevalent. Now, the only way for higher education to prevail through these challenging times and become a positive social mobility model is to adopt progressive strategic models. And here now to share a little bit more is the Think You Made Us President and CEO, Dr. Edward Summers, Director of High, Higher Education Consultancy, Dr. Dalip Diostali. And then also we've got higher education intern, Perrin Kennedy. And uh, we welcome you all to the show. Thank you. Thank it's good you to be here. Thank you very much, for having us. Thank you. Dr. Summers, take it away. I mean, as we talk about uh, education and as we look at what's going on right now, really equity and education through this pandemic, we've had this conversation before, um, you know, things have become somewhat further exacerbated. Yes, so uh, thank you for having us once again. Um, it's uh, great to be here. Uh, so the Thinkubator is, is very much focused on um, about different career and educational pathways. And of course, education is critical. Higher education for young people in the Bronx, young people of color, low income <laughs> students have always been challenging. Do me. All right, so one of the things that we are focusing on is what happens to these students who are coming out and what, how are universities responding? And the, the main thrust is about change and how do we talk about change? How does this change come in? And that has been one of the focal points of the higher education consultancy as we reach out and work with universities to find and identify approaches and means, things which are post COVID, things which they have never done in the past, approaches which would be different, which would engage all these populations. These are new demographics. Uh, as we all know, the numbers which are going, are going down when it comes to the existing enrollment. And that has been one of the big issues for institutions is where are these students of tomorrow going to come from? It is not the pools that they have known and traditionally drawn from. It is the groups and uh, students who have been in a certain sense left outside of their uh, enrollment pool. And that is what we're trying to do is understand these students, understand what tomorrow is going to be, where these demographics are and what are their needs? What is it that we have to start doing differently? And those are the things that universities need to start responding to. Change, how is that change gonna happen? What are the elements that they're going to shift? You know, And who are the people who are going to lead? Because it is all about leadership also. This is not about just making some changes within an office here or a department over there. This is about the kind of leadership that we are supposed to envision that is going to take the country forward. And with it, the new students, the new, this all with, we keep talking about in the, these millions of students, high school students who are getting ready to graduate or, graduate or who have just graduated or who are in the pipeline. Where are these students going to go to? How are programs going to respond to their needs? especially in this changing environment where the kind of jobs, the kind of skills, all these things are going to be different. Right. What are uh, let me, there? Yeah, let me bring Perrin in and talk a little bit about the work that you yes. do, Perrin. And uh, when we talk about education and we look at some of the disparities and how COVID-19 has actually shaped, there may be some things that we're not paying attention to. And so from your perspective as an intern, uh, talk to us about it. Yeah, um, I not only have the unique perspective of being an intern, but I am also currently a student and uh, an undergrad. I was an HBCU student, and now I am a graduate student at Columbia University. So I've really kind of seen firsthand how education has been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I, I would say in terms of things that the Thinkubator, what we're focusing on is really how do colleges and universities create new academic programs to meet a new changing world. So for example, Morris Brown College, which is an HBCU in Atlanta, they recently just announced a hospitality management and hotel management um, training center on their campus in partnership with an investment firm. And this will be the first program of its kind on an HBCU campus. And Morris Brown, that they, they kind of had a history where they struggled a little bit, but introducing new programs like these, um, they help to create a, a new idea in students' minds of like, here's a career path that I really never thought of, but there's an opportunity to invest in it and go into it and create a whole new generation of hotel management professionals. 
And that's just an example, just really a taste of what we're working on in terms of we're looking at unique models that will really progressively advance colleges and universities by really putting the lens on, okay, here's something you may not have focused on, but you really want to focus on it because we're trying to unlock a segment of the population for you that you didn't really focus on before. So yeah. um, really exciting work. Dr. Summers, I'll bring you back in to talk a little bit about uh, financial aid, because any parent as well as student have concerns about financial aid. I know that you have some recommendations as well. Sure. Yes. So thank you for that. Uh, so, it, it, you know, c colleges and universities have struggled in this area of financial aid. You know, their, their, their job is to, you know, obviously provide education, but also to think about their financial model. So for, for the Think Beta and this white paper that we're, we're producing, we're recommending rethinking financial aid models in terms of thinking about how you package young people. How do you think about uh, loans? Uh, how do you think about uh, grant and aid? You know, many people don't know this, but, um, you know, many colleges, the way in which they, they package and, and provide financial aid is that, that you have to be a first-time student to get uh, and to qualify for the majority of the scholarships that they often have. So you can't necessarily be a transfer student or you can't necessarily be a student that um, has been disconnected and now is going re getting back re-engaged with colleges and universities. So, you know, the thinking made is thinking, listen, COVID has happened. You know, many people may need a break, you know, in between, they may need a gap year in between college, um, uh, high school and college. And so colleges need to think about that and consider that. Also, many young people may think, I want to stay home, you know, this year and go to a local college and then transfer. So colleges and universities need to think about how they package students. It can't just be about that first time, first year freshman. And in terms of all the aid that they give, oftentimes colleges do this because of uh, what they have to report to the states, what they have to report to uh, reporting agencies like U.S. News and World Report. So they put all their eggs in one basket in terms of investing in that first time first year freshman versus thinking about let's spread the wealth in terms of how we think about our financial aid dollars. How about we spread, we, we, we did 50% of our financial aid budget could go to first time first year freshmen, but let's do it to those students who took a gap year. Let's do it to students who have transferred or are gonna transfer to our institutions from a community college because you know, this past year of COVID was pretty hard and they want to stay home, stay local, get their grades up and then transfer to us. So college and universities need to reimagine and rethink about this new model that's emerging in terms of how people are thinking about and making decisions about how to go to college in order to make sure that they are packaging and, they, and packaging students um, to be successful, quite, quite frankly, and to be able to afford their respective institutions. So it's those type of models that college and universities need to think about. They can't just rely on first time first year freshman and putting all that money there they need to think about the diversity under which the circumstances today that students are entering colleges and universities yeah i got the segment's over but i gotta make sure i get this out uh, ask the question where do people find the white paper the information uh, that you're referring to sure so uh, we produced a uh a opt ed for diverse education uh that's right now currently on their website the white paper will be ready to go tomorrow um, on the thinkubator the thinkubator.org's website as well all righty. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you all for being here on Open. Certainly uh, an eye opener when it comes to really taking a look at what we're doing in the world of education. The pandemic has changed a lot of things and hopefully uh, we'll all be able to navigate and make a positive shift. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. I want to let you know now, if you want more information, please go visit their website at thethinkubator.org again, thethinkubator.org.